Swift has a second kind of loop called a while loop. Give this thing a condition and it will run your loop again and again and again until your condition becomes false. Now you're gonna see while loop in a lot of code out there in Swift, but it is less common and less useful than a for loop. And so I'm gonna show you what it does, how to use it in your own code, but we're not really gonna dwell on it because for is just more common and more useful. Okay, let's look at an example. First up, let's say we've got a variable called countdown equal to 10. We want to count down from 10 all the way down to including one and then print blast off. We'd write this, var countdown equals 10. Then while countdown is greater than zero, print the current countdown number and subtract one from countdown, end the loop. And when it finishes, print out blast off. Now, what's happening here? We create our integer counter as a variable starting at 10. We then start our while loop, and there's our condition. Is countdown greater than zero? And as long as that is true, it'll go ahead and run the loop body. And it'll run the loop body again and again and again and again and again, as long as countdown is greater than zero. But we're subtracting one from countdown for each of these loop iterations. So eventually, countdown is going to be exactly equal to zero, and the loop will end. And when it ends, Control will go to the next line after the loop. It'll print blast off. Now, while loops are really useful when you don't know how many times a loop is gonna go around. To show us off, I want to introduce you to a useful piece of functionality that exists on both int and double. It's called random in. Give this thing a range and you'll get back a random int or random double within that range. For example, we could say, I want to make a new integer between one and a thousand. I could say, let id equals int dot random in the range one through a thousand. And again, it could be a thousand. It could be one. It could be 500 or any other value between one and a thousand. We could make a random decimal between zero and one. We'll do uh, let amount equals double dot random in the range zero through one. Now we can use this functionality with a while loop to simulate rolling lots of virtual D20, i.e. 20 sided dice. Uh, and we'll roll again, 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 and end the loop only when a 20 is rolled, a critical hit for all you Dungeons & Dragons players out there. Let's give that a try now. We'll say var roll is zero. That's the integer we're gonna to use to store our current roll. We'll then carry on looping until we finally roll a 20. So I'll say while roll is not equal to 20, until we finally get that elusive critical hit, we'll roll a new dice and print what we got. So we'll say roll equals int dot random in one through 20. And print I rolled a string interpolation roll. After the loop finishes, we can only be here if we rolled a 20, if we got that critical hit. So I'll do print critical hit like that. And let's run the code and see what happens. Boom. So you can see all sorts of rolls. I got a four, 13, four, 14, 16, da, 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 and eventually 20 came out. But we didn't know that ahead of time. We've got no idea how many times the loop's gonna go around. So it'll keep on going until this condition becomes false. Let's try it again. I'll press play again. And uh, fewer rolls this time. I got 20 faster. Clearly I'm a bit luckier this time. Now you will find yourself using both while loops and for loops in your code. For loops are obviously, like I said, more common, obviously because they're great at doing things like finite ranges. I want to loop from one through five or through every item in the array or set or dictionary. But while loops are still very useful and commonly used when you want to have some kind of custom condition.